photographers. Fujifilm recently released a firmware update for the X-H2S, and I managed to convince Fujifilm Canada to send me a couple of X-H2Ss so I could see and demonstrate the differences. Now, I am not an employee of Fujifilm. They have not paid me or reviewed this script or video before posting, and I am not sponsored. I won't stop to read you an ad, nor do I allow YouTube to interrupt my videos. But I will take a minute to tell you about this new studio space at Henry's in Toronto at the end of the video. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side to compare. Now, on the left, the X-H2S with firmware 2.1. The 2 and 2.1 upgrades included the video mode focus meter assist for manual focus, bug fixes, and improved support for the network and tethered shooting features. And on the right, the X-H2S with firmware 3.0. Now, I'm sorry that Fujifilm updated the camera before sending it. Fujifilm's firmware update procedures are really the nicest and simplest of all. The camera remote phone app alerts you that there's an update and then does the whole download and install, so you don't need to use a computer and copy files to a memory card. So, Release 3 includes a small downloadable manual to explain the new features in Releases 2 and 3. I'll go through them in detail, but at a high level, there are some menu adjustments. Manual focus in video now includes the focus meter available on the X-H2 and X-T5, and there's improved support for the optional FTXH network file transmitter adapter. Now, I'm waiting for my review unit of that. And 3 supports this new TGBT1 tripod grip. Back to that later. What we're really interested in are the changes and improvements to autofocus, specifically subject tracking. For instance, the upgrade claims the motion prediction algorithm has been improved to enable stable tracking of subjects moving at high speed in the frame. Well, I'm going to go back to the Brio train to start, but I also asked for the 150 to 600 millimeter lens to do some field work on tracking other subjects. Let's start with firmware 2.1, and I'll use the same XF 16 to 55 lens for both. The driverless train will get to the lens's closest focus point. The focus mode is continuous, wide area tracking with detection options off. Exposure is manual, white balance, sunlight, Provia film sim. Performance boost on, resolution priority. JPEG fine, a 3x2 aspect, that's 26 megapixels. The camera is externally powered. Drive with mechanical shutter is 15 frame burst. The focus point locks onto the train and stays with it around the bend to the edge of the frame all the way to the closest focus point. Then, when I press the shutter, the focus frame remains steady. Reviewing the images, the camera took 130. Every single photo is in focus. There's not a wobble anywhere. Let's add the driver and turn on face eye detect. That's what threw the X-T5 off. On the X-H2S, even with firmware 2.1, the focus point follows nicely, but face eye is only detected at the very last minute. Looking at the images at 4 frames per photo, there is one miss in 125 images. The focus stays with the train. The driver is generally somewhat soft until face detect identifies the eye at the last minute. Let's switch over to the 2S with firmware 3. Using the Fujifilm X-Acquire desktop app, I saved them from the camera with 2.1 and then restored them to this camera. So while the driver's on brake, we'll go again. The tracking hasn't changed. It locks on and stays with the train around the corner all the way to the closest focus point. That remains true even while bursting. And as with 2.1, all 140 images are perfectly focused. 
I'll turn Face Eye Detect on and put the driver back in place. The results are similar. Again, face and eye detected at the very last minute. The driver's face remains in sharp focus with no whist frames all the way to the closest focus point. So I, I went out looking for the kinds of subjects that the XH2S can identify, like streetcars and trains. Well, the images confirm the simulated test results. Trains identified and focused. The resulting still images corroborate the simulations. Even with foreground distractions and obstacles in this 45 frame sequence of an approaching streetcar, no missed frames. Using Face Eye and following random skaters at Toronto City Hall, the camera picked out individuals quickly with sharp results. Then, following specific people was a little more challenging in a busy crowd, but still provided some good results, although it didn't always stay with the subject I'd chosen. I had better results with croaky curl players at Stacked Market Rink. And dogs which now seems kind of old hat. <laughs> then airplanes. With a long lens and a lot of patience, shooting across the water to the island airport, planes are identified and focused, even in the air, although I admit following at 600 millimeters is a challenge. Henri Cartier-Bresson liked to photograph ducks as a lens test, and using the camera's bird setting, I found ducks in High Park to be a useful test of subject identification on the XH2S also. Although there were a few misses, overall I was very pleased with the results. Sharp eyes, even when the duck was behind foliage, or in fast action, bursting at 1 500th of a second. A very pleasant experience with lots more great photos than I anticipated. I used the bicycle setting for this burst of a cyclist coming towards me, but the camera seemed to be using face eye. <laughs> Whatever. Great results. No missed frames in this 21 image sequence. And while much of this feels like a great step forward with a simpler setup to handle challenging situations and really improving my results, it does still feel like an evolving technology where it's easy to see that more can be done. That said, it also shows how I can improve my skills at following fast-moving objects. Reviewing the photos at home, I expected more disappointment, but was pleasantly surprised by the results. The release notes also indicate that focus speed will improve if both the AF on button and the shutter released are pressed simultaneously. Fujifilm's notes for this release indicates that subject detection has been improved for situations like backlighting, uh, looking sideways, and small subjects. I've asked Anne to help, first with firmware 2.1. In profile, her eye is detected, and as she slowly turns away, the eye detection is lost. As she turns back, it reappears. Then with firmware 3, seems about the same. Let's try the backlight. At three stops underexposed and as a silhouette, but with any amount of light, this is 1% on the Surway Dragon, her eye is immediately detected. Zero light, 1% light. I can't see the difference with the naked eye, but the camera does. Is there any room for improvement here? So with firmware 3, Still, three stops underexposed, same effect. When I set the light to 1%, as I is detected, off, on, <laughs> amazing. Last one, small subjects. First with 2.1, and I've set the camera back far enough so that when I zoom out, I detect no longer works. But you can see as I slowly creep in how quickly it regains Anne's eye. Back to three at the same distance. Eyes lost about the same time and it's detecting another smaller object. Not sure if that's the face, and as we zoom in, the eye doesn't seem to be regained as quickly. Now, there are two minor menu changes. In Display Custom Settings, Screen 4, 
What 2.1 called image transfer order has been renamed communication status for 3.0. Uh, let me show you how that worked in 2.1. When you have auto transfer of images selected, there's an icon that appears to the right of the geolocation icon to indicate that there are images to transfer. And while they're being transferred, the images count down. That icon is controlled by the display custom setting image transfer order. In 3.0, it's been renamed as communication status, and a new phone icon appears underneath the Bluetooth icon, along with the number of images to transfer icon to its left, and then the geolocation icon. Deselect communication status, and all three disappear. The second is even more obscure. With 3.0, the network menu's Bluetooth option has a new setting, the Bluetooth device list. It's dimmed out even after I connected multiple Bluetooth devices. This is the newly released weather-resistant TG BT1 tripod grip. It connects to the camera with Bluetooth. It's about 15 centimeters, weighs about 200 grams, plastic with a grippy surface. It feels nice and solid. Open up the arms and it turns into a little tripod stand. And then there's a quarter inch screw for the camera's tripod socket. It's powered by a standard 2032 button battery, and for Bluetooth pairing, press and hold the camera's Bluetooth key, which makes this menu appear. But 2.1 won't recognize the tripod. I know, I tried. 3.0 recognizes devices other than phones. So while holding down the Bluetooth key on the grip, it pairs. <laughs> and the tripod icon appears under the Bluetooth icon as long as the communication dis status display is on. And yes, you guessed, now the Bluetooth device list is available and displays the grip. It turns red when the battery is low, and it powers itself off when the camera is turned off. There's a key to take photos, and another that starts or stops recording video. With Fujifilm's power zoom lenses, it can zoom using the lever. Uh, now the button on the left side releases the tilt, which locks in several positions, and the center button releases the pan, which locks in 90 degree increments. That's good for vlogging. <laughs> so, it seems useful. It can also be connected to other recent models, including the X-T30, X-S10, and X-T3, 4, and 5. Again, you'll need the latest firmware. Now, my summary is that although the changes are small and incremental, definitely worth upgrading. And today, I'm one of the first to record in a new free-to-use studio in Toronto, open to all creators. I'll post the link to make a booking in the description. And it's sponsored and supported by Buffer Festival and Henry's in their new flagship store on Church Street. They provide the gear, and in addition to this shooting scene, there's a podcast recording station, an editing and VR facilities. Any equipment you needed, provided by Henry's. As I said, although Fujifilm did lend me cameras and lenses, they did not pay me or review the script or video before posting. My sponsors are those of you who are members of this channel, and we're all thankful for that as it means I can turn off YouTube's ad interruptions and refuse sponsors who'd like me to read ads during my videos. As always, I read and reply to all civil comments and relevant questions. <laughs> Thanks for taking time to watch today. Stay safe.